militias that were there, why did they want to kill Gaddafi? Because he was our ally. And why did Barack Obama intervene in that war to put, to put in Libya the Muslim Brotherhood and all those militias? Because he was siding with them against Gaddafi. That's why. So the war begins in February 2011. He sends Hillary Clinton to the United Nations to get permission from the UN so we can use our air force and attack Gaddafi. So our air force, the US Air Force, became the Al Qaeda Air Force. And then we decided to, to have an ambassador to Al Qaeda. We selected Chris Stevens, a special envoy, and sent him to Benghazi. And then we sent Hillary Clinton in March of 2011 to London, where she meets with the transitional government, headed by whom? By the Libyan Muslim Brotherhood. And then, when Chris Stevens arrived in Benghazi, he moves to the special diplomatic compound where later he was assassinated right in that building. And there, we, bring, we allow Qatar, uh, who they purchased guns from Eastern Europe, one billion dollars of weapon enters to Benghazi. And Chris Stevens, our special envoy, gave those to whom? To Al-Qaeda, terror organization, and the Libyan Muslim Brotherhood. And they have the flags of Al-Qaeda, the black flags of Al-Qaeda. And our, for the first time, we had an ambassador to Al-Qaeda by the name of Chris Stevens. All right, so now Gaddafi sees what's happening. NATO is against him, the US, the Libyan Muslim Brotherhood, all of these terror organizations, they're gonna kill me here, I better get out. So he talks to a real admiral by the name of Kubik, and he notifies Carter Ham, our four-star general in charge of the African Command, which is in Stuttgart, Germany, and he says, look, I wanna leave, just take my generals, my family, I wanna get out of here, I wanna quit. And Carter Ham, of course, is happy because we don't have to go to war. And then uh, he notifies uh, Washington, Hillary Clinton says no. Samantha Power, the United Nations says no. Um, ben Rhodes says no. And um, the, the, uh, the other lady, Valerie Jarrett, Valerie Jarrett says no. And, the, and, the, and uh, Susan Rice, who is the director of the United says no. So Hillary wanted to overthrow him. Of course, Obama agreed. He, he was in the, in the same. Uh, who did not want to go to war? The Pentagon did not want to go to war. Carter Ham did not want to go to war. Uh, Gates, the Secretary of Defense, did no one. In fact, the Pentagon says, no, that war is against the national interest. Why would we want to go to war with Sro Gaddafi to put who? The Muslim Brotherhood? To put Al Qaeda in power there? The Pentagon did no one to go to war. So then we start bombing, of course. Uh, out. They also wanted to kill Gaddafi, they didn't want to let him go. So the war number one was unnecessary. Thousands of people died in that war. The war was against the national interest of the United States. And that war was unconstitutional because Congress never gave permission for us to go to war against a, a, a dictator who was our ally and had no longer attacked us at the moment. So we, we had no reason to go to war against Libya other than to put in power the Muslim Brotherhood. So now after Gaddafi is overthrown, Chris Stevens becomes our ambassador to Libya in Tripoli. And now Barack Obama decides he wants to overthrow the dictator of Syria, who is an Alawite, same thing as a Shiite, and of course our president is a Sunni Muslim, radical. So uh, he orders Chris Stevens, you have over here CIA annex, a Malawi's special compound in Benghazi. Here there are 40 or 50 CIA agents, and he orders the CIA to start collecting guns, buying them if necessary, from the terrorists. Just to give an idea how, how many weapons were in Libya, they had 20,000 man pads. Those are the rockets that you shoot planes and bring them down. 20,000, just of that. RPAs, all type of motors, all kinds, all kinds of weapons floating around. So then Chris Stevens now becomes uh, the person implementing the Middle Eastern gun running operation in violation of the Patriot Act, in violation of every law of the United States. And all those weapons began going from Benghazi to southern Turkey, and from southern Turkey to Syria. And who gets the weapons? The Free Syrian Army? No. The Islamic Caliphate got it. ISIS, ISIL, whatever you want to call it, the Islamic Caliphate, the Islamic State, and, and, Saad, um, and uh, Al Golani's uh, Al Nura Front, which is affiliated to Al Qaeda. In fact, uh, Abu Bakr uh, um, 
Ben, uh, ben Daly, or whatever the, never the name is, or the caliphate leader, he was affiliated to Al-Qaeda, but then he wanted to be on top of Al-Qaeda, and he declared himself a caliph. Abu Bakr um, is his name. Uh, the last name is Al-Baghdadi. Here's his picture here, speaking from Mosul. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Used to be uh, a cleric in, in Iran, Iraq, a cleric, a Muslim cleric. But he now wants to be the caliphate. He wants to overthrow the, 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 the corrupt monarchs of, uh, of the Gulf states. And he wants to be the guy now, the, the leader of, of the uh, most brutal, most brutal thing we've ever seen since Roman times. Crucifixions, decapitations, burning of pilots capture, you name it, they've done it. That and much more. In fact, now that I'm on that topic, over the last decade, one million Christians have been assassinated in the Middle East. One million, 11 Christians a day, an hour, an hour, are being assassinated in the Middle East. Before the Gulf War, there were 20, 000, there were 20 percent Christians in the Middle East, 20 percent. Today, barely three percent. Most of them have been assassinated. You've seen uh, the horrendous things that are happening in, in, in Mosul. In fact, I also have those pictures. If you don't want to sleep tonight or you want to vomit after lunch, you are welcome to see it. These are the most horrendous pictures I've ever seen in my entire life. 15 minutes left, okay. All right, if you want to see it, you're welcome to see it. Crucifixions, decapitations, hundreds of, uh, of uh, uh, severe heads full of blood, like in, like in antiquity, you know, on top of fences. Soldiers captured, uh, killed. Uh, these are horrendous pictures. But I'll pass them out. If you don't want to see it, just pass it to the, the one next door to you. But no matter what I say, the pictures tell it better than I can even say it. I mean, this is the uh, most horrendous pictures I've ever seen in my entire life, right, right there in front of you. All right, so last thing I want to say, I know I'm running out of time here, but. I want to mention a little bit what's happening right now with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has this Wahhabi religion, which is the most radical religion of all of Islam. And there are only 22 million people in Saudi Arabia, and, and there are uh, 275,000 in Qatar, right next to Saudi Arabia, that belong to this religion, the, the most radical of all. And yet, this is the religion that through the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States and Europe has penetrated the West. And this is a religion that practically says, the infidel, you slay the infidel. Uh, and, and, and they want to implement Sharia law here. The Obama administration has allowed the Muslim Brotherhood to infiltrate his government. His name, uh, Muslim Brotherhood Operative, as Assistant Secretary of Homeland Security. Can you imagine? Uh, his advisor in the White House is a, is a, a radical imam by the name of uh, Mohammed Magid who has a, a mosque in the D.C. area and comes from where? From Sudan. And, and this man uh, is the advisor to the White House, CIA, Homeland Security, and FBI. And others like him have erased, sanitized Islam from the books that we use to teach the military, to teach the members of the FBI, CIA, military academies, Homeland Security, and so forth. And you know that the head of the FBI, the CIA, John Brennan, he's a Wahhabi Muslim. The head of the CIA is a Wahhabi Muslim. When John Brennan was stationed chief in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, he converted to that religion. That's why he picked them. So CIA, we have a Wahhabi Muslim. Imagine that. First time ever in our history. All right, so uh, he has allowed this infiltration to go on. From the moment he named uh, Rashid uh, uh, Hussein, a young, uh, a young guy in his 30s, lawyer of the White House first, and now ambassador to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which is made up of 57 nations. And this is the organization that is demanding to criminalize free speech in our nation. So if you say anything against the prophet of Islam, or you criticize Islam, these 57 nations want us to put us in jail for saying that because information suppression is the first step of being conquered. When you cannot speak truthfully what's going on in, in our nation, as I'm doing here. Uh, in fact, um, 
the, the, the uh, Assistant Attorney General, uh, who is now Secretary of, um, of uh, Tom, the, the Dominican guy, Tom is his name, uh, Anyway, it's a Dominican guy who is now second, but he used to be assistant attorney general. He was being asked by Congress repeatedly, does the Justice Department is planning to criminalize free speech in the United States or any criticism of any religion? He wouldn't answer the question. Repeatedly, Congressman, uh, Congressman kept asking him, he would say, no, no, no. And he wouldn't answer the question. We have a bill in Congress introduced to criminalize free speech right now by uh, a senator from Massachusetts who is a Marxist and by a Muslim in, in the House of Representatives. Criminalized free speech in the United States and then the President goes to the United Nations and says, the world does not belong to those that blaspheme the prophet of Islam. What is he saying? So if I say something against the prophet of Islam, if I, uh, historical facts of him, like he was a warrior that assassinated 10,000 people when he conquered Mecca, I would be committing a crime for saying some historical fact. Of all the things I could say, I won't say here. <laughs> My wife said, no, they're going to kill me. <laughs> well, I'm already threatened by them. They, they cannot kill me twice. I, I already received a threat from, from the Muslim uh, Brotherhood. And Juan Torres as well. I don't know if you got one too. Did you get a threat? No, I was very, I was very disappointed. Oh, you were disappointed. <laughs> well, uh, I guess, <laughs> yeah, I did receive a threat from what I said in, in Myrtle Beach, California, which is pretty much what I'm saying here. I did get a threat, I had to report it to FBI, Homeland Security, and Metro Bay Police from the Muslims. Anyway, because that's how they silence you, by threatening you. And uh, look at what happened when you draw a cartoon of Muhammad, which is free speech in Europe and the United States. It, protected by our Constitution, First Amendment, the right of free speech, the right of the free press. They shoot you, like you did in Paris, right? Why did the president not go to Paris? Because he had to march with those world leaders in the defense of what? In the defense of the freedom of the press that drew a cartoon that brought those, those two brothers uh, uh, to kill them, to kill them, right? He did not want to be there. He didn't know what they have Holder, who was already in Paris for another meeting, to stay and represent the United States. He did not want to be seen there, because if he was there, he would be doing what? He would be defending the right of a Frenchman of free speech and free press. And, and he said to the UN, the world does not belong to those that blaspheme the prophet. And, and blaspheming the prophet is drawing a picture of him, because that is forbidden in Islam. So that's why he didn't go to Paris. That what was, why did he get that bus from Winston Churchill to kick out the White House the first day he was in the Oval Office? Because Churchill said horrendous things about Islam, besides being uh, an imperialist no? and uh, in favor of colonies. So he got rid of that. Now we see Winston Churchill, we see him differently from because uh, we have Judeo-Christian values which the president does not. We see him that stood alone against Hitler, but England stood alone fighting Hitler. So we see Winston Churchill as, as a strong person, as a strong ally of the United States, but Barack Obama sees him as somebody who despises Islam. That's who he sees him, because he doesn't see things as we do, because he's a radical Muslim, and we are not. We're, uh, why does he go to Cairo, and this guy that I mentioned before, Rashid Hussein, writes his speech in Cairo, as soon as he's president, ask Moxima Bale to put in front of him all the members of the Muslim Brotherhood. So you have to have him in front of me there. And Hosni Babara does that for him. And then he says, the United States is not a Judeo-Christian nation. And then he lies to the United States and says, the, the, the Muslims were here from the very beginning of our history. Yeah? How many Muslims did you see in the Mayflower? How many Muslims signed the Declaration of Independence? How many Muslims lived in the 30 British colonies? How many of them signed the Constitution? I mean, the Muslims are moving here in the 1960s to colonize us, like they do in Europe. Not to integrate, to colonize us, like they're doing right in Europe, where they have 55 million Muslims. And look how far the Muslim Brotherhood has, a, a radical Islam has advanced in our nation when they are barely 1% of our population. Goodness, imagine they're 10%. Imagine that, with 1%, they are in the White House, they are advisors to all, all of our agencies. It's unconscionable, absolutely unconscionable what the president has done. Let me mention something else, and I'm not going to have minutes left. 
So I'll be quickly here. Uh, Saudi Arabia is an enemy of the United States. Pretends to be a friend, but it's not. The present king that took power in January after the other king, Abdullah, died after 90 years old, leaving uh, 30 kids and 12 wives. But the present king, King Salman, when he was a prince, and this is in today's Miami Herald, and a future article that I'm writing right now for our website, the present king of Saudi Arabia helped a charity to help the 9-11 terrorists to attack us. The current king, 